Crazy Dog Audio Theatre and Tin Pot Productions present Poet Laureate of the People's Republic of Cork. Selections from the poetry of Jerry Murphy, set to music and sound by Roger Gregg. Program 5 The Fabulous Murphy Brothers. Tony Sheehan, together with Jerry Murphy, were the leaders of something called the Fabulous Murphy Brothers an anarchic guerrilla strike force of artists of many cooperating disciplines seeking to shake things up in Cork. And as this series of hard-to-categorize programs attest, Murphy and his artistic accomplices have always overcome the pigeonhole purists by simply ignoring them. But Tony can explain Jerry Murphy and the spirit of the fabulous Murphy brothers far better than I. He formed with me a group called the Fabulous Murphy Brothers, which grew out of a, um, uh, our decision to protest the protesters in Kinsale who were protesting Ailish O'Connell's sculpture that was going in there at the time. So about 11 people formed this movement called the Fabulous Murphy Brothers, painted the side of a white van to look like a circus was arriving into town, arrived into Kinsale in the middle of this controversy and produced a perfectly formed figurative sculpture of a fisherman on top of a plinth. And Jerry's work at that time very much, for me, almost represented the sense of anarchy that everybody felt in Cork City. Fort Pinochet. We will assume that you have apprehended a suitable subject. You may wish to hire someone with a little experience to perform the actual execution and leave it to you to stumble upon the corpse in the courtyard. <laughs> but in the event to your being prepared to do your own killing, then we suggest suffocation. <laughs> Having taken the necessary precaution of securing the subject firmly, thus avoiding struggling and subsequent unsightly bruising, when dead, hang by the heels, slit the throat, and leave to drain. Here's a tip. Crush the skull slightly. This makes it easier to slip off the skin. Scoop the eyes out gently. In fact, it might be wiser to consult our resident American expert. But with perseverance, the basic vitality of the subject can be retained in the finished work. Good hunting. The Fabulous Murphy Brothers then became this kind of core whereby myself and Jerry would, would haul in different people depending on what it is we wanted to do. Sometimes we would show up to solicitors' functions, uh, kidnap uh, the compere uh, and run off with them, uh, causing mayhem for the rest of the solicitors. Sometimes we would do readings in UCC. Almost all of them would end up in chaos and uh, almost all of them, you know, took the piss out of the seriousness that we felt was in the arts at the time. End of part one.
dead to the earth, dead to the faint wriggle of spring Through the slag heaps until somehow a new muse spark in the familiar gloom Like a faulty cigarette lighter I switch on the sweet flicker of desire again Wind the slack coil of lust to singing tightness Begin dreaming of your wet 7% yellow stock market crashes On derelict lighthouse news And here's John Fitzgerald Kennedy Almost with an arm's reach, definitely within range Standing up in an open top Cadillac waving frantically at me and shouting Shoot you fool, shoot! It's June 63 on Military Hill I'm ten years of age unarmed except for a congealed wad of licorice in my pocket And anyway my mother is right beside me squeezing my trigger finger much too tightly in her excitement Onwards and upwards you declared, nudging me towards the pit and the long drop into unutterable stillness. When I crawled out, it was to John Coltrane. Faint but soothing in the distance, the agitated shuffling of my own feet and the weary dull operative still patiently explaining the revised butter allowance. Listen, Earthling. And yet it would be a mistake to think that Cherry is not a serious poet. And I think that that's important to say because he might be anarchic in his humour. He might be anti-establishment. He might use all kinds of revolutionary imagery in his work. But underneath it, there is someone who has lived an interesting life, but a life that is built up around routine, some tragedy, some loss, and uh, a great sense that to mediate that to a public requires humor, uh, requires, I suppose, um, an ability to um, to kind of non-plus people. If at the bottom of everything there is only a wild ferment, a dark power twisting and turning, spewing up indigestible phenomena, great or inconsequential. If an unfathomable, insatiable emptiness lurks behind the beautiful and the unmentionable, if one generation rises up after another like the leaves of the forest, if one generation follows another like the songs of the birds in the wood, If the human race passes through the world like a ship across the ocean, a wind through the desert, so what?
When the moon rises, the church bells hang silent and shallow mass graves reappear. When the moon rises, the river swamps the streets and the heart is afloat on an uncharted ocean. Nobody eats oranges under a full moon. One eats fruit that is green and cold. When the moon rises, moon of a thousand murdered faces, the silver coinage sobs in your pocket. people overlook the fact that here is a man who has lived a life that isn't always written about in just bald humour or insane terms. Uh, there is one poem that I think I should read to you and it is why I would encourage people to read Jerry's work actually. It's called My Mother Alive and Well and Living In. Six months after the report of your death I start a rumour among my schoolmates that you are still alive. That you are hiding out in the Bolivian Andes with the Lieutenant Colonel of the Treasury Brigade who fled La Paz during one of the three October coup d'etat with 13 million US dollars and four lorry loads of gold. Just wait for the letters, I tell them, and the postal orders. That poem brings together the two parts of his life, I think. It's the early stuff, it's all the revolutionary Bolivian uh, put priests up against the wall and shoot and stuff with the loss of his mother. And I think as he has matured, he has fine-tuned that humour and he has fine-tuned as well his sense of communication. Be uninvited. Forgotten in the hallway, the fully laden coat stand is crowded by ghosts. Each longing to feel once again the lovely weight of clothes. And this is what I mean, that, that he is unafraid of exposing himself uh, and his inner self and his life, his thoughts, his feelings and failings. But there is, there is that um, hard veneer of humour and wit and acerbic commentary, if you like, 
but it doesn't it doesn't take much to see beneath it. And nothing. And the road runs out into the sand and I kick off my sandals and walk along the tide line and the fishing smacks zigzag between the breakwater and the horizon Their wakes crossing and recrossing. Leaving long foaming gashes on the surface. Which gradually disappear. The sea tending to her own wounds. You've been listening to the last of a five-part series presenting The Poet Laureate of the People's Republic of Cork, the poetry of Jerry Murphy set to music and sound by Roger Gregg. This has been a special programme from Crazy Dog Audio Theatre and Tin Pot Productions and features the voice and musical talents of Liam Heffernan, Morgan C. Jones, Charlie Murphy, David Farrell, Emer O'Grady and Roger Gregg, with guest appearances from Charlie Ruxton, Neve Linehan, Miles Breen and the Gaiety School of Acting. Music and soundscapes composed by Roger Gregg with contributions from the cast. The live show was recorded at the Everyman Palace Bar with sound engineer Mark McGrath. Stage director and audio producer Roger Gregg. Executive producer Daryl Morehouse. Special thanks to the Everyman Palace Theatre, Dadalus Press, Courtyard Studio, UCC Campus Radio and to Conal Creedon, Hugh Lorigan, Mick Hannigan, Pat Cotter and Tony Sheehan. This programme is made possible by grants from the Arts Council of Ireland and by the BCI's Sound and Vision Broadcasting Scheme. Find out more about Jerry Murphy, his books, the CD, the YouTube videos and the live show by visiting us at tin.pot.com and crazydogaudiotheatre.com.